Yes, hello everybody. Welcome back to Atlanta, the outside this incredible spaceship, as I want to call it, the Mercedes-Benz, an absolutely beautiful backdrop as well. Um, behind us as well, we are next, next to the soccer ball. If you haven't seen our match vlog, go and check that out. I mean, I'm in awe as well. Uh, Jay has obviously been in a few videos, which you will see this week. Steve has obviously been with me all week as well. And this is the last word. Uh, yeah, so that was the American theme, because obviously we are in America. Uh, this is the last word we'll be talking about the game. I want to also bring up the event around us as well. And a little bit, of course, what happens next up in New Jersey as well. I'm going to come to you, Jay. Um, we'll, we'll talk about what it means for Newcastle later. Uh, I just want to talk about the match at the moment. When the lineup come out, pretty decent, very, very strong. However, the bench, very, very weak, full of, full of under-21s. Uh, super committed to the game. I think Eddie said, let's play Chelsea, right? And I think we came out with especially a central core that was really strong. Yeah. I was actually surprised by that. I thought that we would put everyone on the pitch. We've got one more game over here, right, before we get home to play the other games. But I thought this would be the game to relax. I was totally wrong. Uh, we came out with a really strong core of players, and I was actually blown away by that. When I looked at the lineup, I was like, wow, we only have so many of the new kids and extra people. And I, I really wasn't ready for that. I guess Eddie said, let's see what we can do in Atlanta. I, I have no justification of that. I just was blown away by that. Steve, were you happy to see four at the back this time? Because obviously the other night we were in Philadelphia, three at the back, it didn't really work to extend defensively, but you switch it back to four. Are you happy with that? Yeah, we played a lot better. We played a lot better. Okay, outside of the first half, because Chelsea really were, Nico Jackson was coming at us with just raw pace, energy, power, and cuckoo shuffling things along. They they really did. Um, they played a really good first half, but defensively we still only conceded one compared to the three the other night with a back four. So less is more on some occasions, and I think that's just how we are, you know, set up to be the most successful Newcastle United four at the back. Um, yeah, I thought I, I genuinely that you know, w with that whole thing about going three at the back, it's a friendly. It's time to experiment, and I think Eddie realized that let's just go four at the back. He did experiment. Lewis Marley straight in full ninety yeah. minutes, and he did not look out of place. No. I want to talk about him later. Gordon obviously played a few multiple positions. Isaac went over to the left, so he experimented a little bit. But obviously, Steve's mentioned there, Jay. The first half it wasn't a great, probably twenty-five minutes because Chelsea was cutting through us two or three times, and eventually, Botman's obviously done, uh, and Jackson goes round and uh, it's a good finish. Don't get me wrong, and we're, we're one 0 down. So. Everyone is like, Chelsea won't be good this year. It's all going to be fine. They won't be at the top. I, I recommend you look at part of the first half of this because they knocked us on our feet for sure. Because we're all like, no, no, they won't rebuild that fast. Monster well, doesn't have time. Well, the truth is they came at us and our lineup didn't deal with it well. Like we were very uh, reactionary, which is, which is part of the game, right? Sometimes you're not on your front foot. You got to play off your back foot. But the space they found, especially down the sides on, uh, let's say the right side um, from where I was sitting, yeah, like side. Was, side, yeah. they just came at him and there was space. And I haven't, I got to go back and watch to find out why there was space. Like we don't expect just a solitary left back to deal with the whole space problem. But Do you reckon a, there was a protection there issue in front of the defense? I just don't know. I think maybe, maybe, and I'm highly speculative here, maybe this is a riff off of different formation but a space control problem because I will say that when you look at the Philly game the space problem is the same with a different formation and so everyone is like yeah Chelsea they got nothing mm, I don't know about that I don't, I, I don't know about that and I was a little shocked for the first 30 minutes I was really rocked back by that yeah the front four look, look impressive from Chelsea I think Pochettino's got an idea where they can all interchange and they're all diminutive pace yeah. doesn't matter they're if they're young play sorry to cut yeah you they're, off. All, they're, they're all young players who he oh, can going to go. Yeah, and he's going to obviously learn, but we, we won't talk too much about Chelsea. Obviously, right. the first half, they were fantastic. And right. we had the injury for Fabio I've just checked Lee Ryder's tweet. Apparently, he's got a hamstring tweak. That's why he was substituted. It's not serious. Right. So, fingers crossed. Obviously, Eddie Howe will be talking about that, I no doubt. Um, whether he makes the... Because it's only literally a couple of days for the New York game. Probably not. But if it's not serious, that's great. Uh, we come into the um, half-time, and obviously, we were 
I, I, well, I, just before the half time, sorry, because I did miss the Miggy goal. I went downstairs because you will see in the vlog as, as well. Did uh, as did I. As did Jay, because this man, and I have to give you a big shout out because today you've trapped me and Steve like kings today. Oh. And I want to personally thank you. I know yes. you've said, um, you know, I'll, I'll come and treat you and all this sort of stuff. And I didn't expect it, Jay, and last night you were buying us pints. Uh, today you've obviously bought me paint, you've bought uh, Steve something as well. You've even went out your way to get us hospitality, like VIP tickets. You've even treated with food as well. I've, I've literally only spent an Uber ride today. And that's oh, well. because of you and I want to say personally, we, thank, we take, thank you very much. We take cash here. Like, it's fine. This is America. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you because, yeah. you know, I, I don't get that hospitality anywhere. Well... It shows how important you are, this channel is, Steve's input is. This is America, this is Atlanta, and we are a really passionate soccer, football, see what I did there, community, right? Um, we care, I care, and many people like, we just want you to feel welcome here. Oh, and you have today. Hey, hey, how did it look tonight with 70,000 people here? How many, how many seats did you see missing? Not many. Almost none. Right. And this is the full capacity here. I'm sure you'll stitch in some videos of all this, but it was incredible. Now, it was quiet compared to a normal Atlanta game here because there were four clubs and all the stuff, but everyone showed up for Newcastle versus Chelsea. It literally was a preview of the titanic struggle that will be four to eight, wherever you think we are. It is going to be a bloodbath at the top of the table, and it will be worse than this tonight, which is why I, th I was hoping that we would be more sort of avant-garde, more aggressive about that. I would say that we were at least moderately responsive. After the first 30 minutes of kind of getting knocked back, missed the Mickey goal. I'm so unhappy that I'm in my own house that I was downstairs getting ready to film the players coming through. To get I was video. doing exactly the same thing. thing. And then I'm standing there, like, I'm, I'm videoing, and then I'm just jumping up and down, which ruined the video, and I'm like, oh, wait, you're supposed to be videoing. And I tried to stop jumping, but then I was like, it's Miggy in Atlanta, and I started jumping again, right? So it's, it's a complex series of emotions, which is why it makes it easy, like, it's easy for Atlanta to welcome you, you all here, because I know you think us Yanks are loons, but we are footy mad. Like we are deeply footy mad and we'll take whatever we can get. I wanna say this, tonight I saw the best football I've ever seen in this building. I was trying to figure out how many matches I've been to here. It's a lot. It's mostly MLS plus some international friendlies and some cups with, and I've, I've seen it all. I saw the best footy I've ever seen here tonight. And it was just Chelsea and Newcastle knifing each other in a friendly. Hey, but it was serious business, wasn't it, Lee, from the get-go? Like, the match was a little more intense than one might think for a friendly in the summer, wouldn't you say? I think so. The touch, you can, t you can clearly tell it was a lot more. And I think, I think the atmosphere, as you say, wasn't what you would probably say, but... You know, you talked about there, and I know I've gone on a tangent left field. This is what, what happens in the last. No, this, this is what happens in the last word. Whereas, you know, the first game was probably probably a third full, and then obviously the two big cl bigger clubs. Sorry, uh, it was almost literally a full house, so it was fantastic to see. And obviously, me and Jay did miss the goal, which is a shame. But you are here. You were unfortunately I didn't get it on video, but I heard you were. Um, a bit of a Tarzan, you know, for this oh, long hair, and you had your top off, and you literally just had, well, I don't know what, what you had shown, but um, I think you enjoyed yourself. Oh, man, uh, that, that genuinely is the greatest moment I've had supporting Newcastle, genuinely. Oh. One of the best moments of my life, I'm telling you right now. He skinned Cucurella, that guy's hair is on fire after that, I'm telling you, it's literally, it's, it's a bush on fire, Cucurella. He skinned him, and then just a beautiful finish, left corner it was it was sensational it was absolutely sensational um and that was that was the 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 highlight easily of 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 the night i mean the whole crowd was just you know loving it and it was just written in the stars wasn't it and that's just it's why it's why i traveled 1100 miles here and then 400 to philadelphia and whatnot and i'm going to harrison because those moments that's worth it that is worth it, and, and doing it in a full, I mean, Jesus, it's just, it's a great goal, a really, really great goal, and it meant a lot to Miggy and, and everyone, so I'm just privileged to be here, to be honest.
it's massive for Miggy because it had to be him and yeah. I think it's also a good thing for your fans when I say Atlanta fans oh, I mean absolutely. because everybody I had Chelsea fans next to me they stood up and clapped because they were all willing on a guy who's done it been successful got his move to a Premier League side had he's had in different spells at Newcastle yeah. it was great he was poor and he's come back great again and that was his moment and he took it what can you say? I mean, we missed it, but he took it, didn't he? Well, I can see it on the replay. And by the way, my videos of the players coming in at that time, they're pretty good. But it's its storybook ending, right? For the odds of us seeing Mickey on this pitch again, they're low. And I was saying that in my section. I was like, hey, enjoy Mickey because the probability of him playing here, it's possible. World Cup 26. World Cup 26. That kind of positive attitude right there is what I'm looking for there, Steve. But the reality is, probability is low, so enjoy it while you can see it. Like, live in the moment for what we are looking at. Because you can't control the future, so be now. And for that kind of send-off, especially for me, long-time Newcastle fan, relatively recent since the founding of Atlanta United, to see the best player that's ever been on our pitch without compromise without question miggy is a good premier league player he was unmarkable over here in our league and we watched that for years for him to sign off with that goal at the end of the first half you know if the only price that i had to pay was that i didn't see it that is well paid and well purchased lee and he did this, didn't he? Did he celebration, of course. <laughs> and I, I also, I said to your missus, and he, uh, uh, just off camera before, I think that was a deliberate substitution late in that second half, so he got the applause. He was, the board lit up with him. I tried to take a picture of the board with 24 and someone else, and I was like, oh my God, they're subbing Mickey early. So I was trying to grab a picture of his final sub, but then I think everyone was like, no, no, we're not doing that right now. Let him play a little longer. And he went on and played another 12 minutes or so yeah. before the board because I'm telling you, where I was, I saw the board go up with his number on it, and then it quickly came down, and they let it run out, which is, by the way, we deserve that here in Atlanta. We come here, this stadium sells out six matches a year at 70,000 people for the MLS. This isn't Premier League football. This is us over here. We regularly sell 40,000. Top 10 attendance in the world. Top sign of the yeah. in the world. You guys have been in and around you that territory. The, you saw the beautiful stadium. We went around. We looked at all the angles. It's amazing. So it's easy to come here for, you know, MLS football. But to see Miggy sign out like sign out like that, let's do that. Like, I am behind that 100%. World class. Yeah, the two things. He scored the goal. And he was substituted deliberately, I felt, for, so he got the raptures and the, the applause and so on. But uh, we were better second half, weren't we, Steve? It, it, obviously, yes, we scored just before the break, but um, we were a little bit better, weren't we? A little bit more energy. I think the defence was a little bit more structured, although it was great to see Nick Pope by the, back, by the way, because he was a half-time oh. substitute. Chelsea was still a threat, despite us playing better. And Nick Pope, he does three saves. Two of them were absolutely oh, world-class, yeah. weren't they? Oh my God! Especially the last one at the end. He had to use all all of his all of his height, all of his wits, all of his reflexes. And the best thing about all three saves, you know what it is? And I value this most in goalkeepers. No rebound chance was offered to any of the attackers. You know how many good goalkeep you know how many goalkeepers make incredible saves, but then a guy is there to tap it in, and it's like all oh, that was for nothing. Not Nick Pope. All three of them. One of them was pretty good. The other two were just. I mean, I said to you, I said to you, Dubravka doesn't save that. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, but that's for other reasons. But yeah, ex 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 exactly. He just doesn't make that kind of save. And Nick Pope has won us multiple points. I mean, the immediate one that springs to mind, the greatest game I've seen Nick Pope in a Newcastle shirt was Brighton away last year, the nil nil. Early, absolutely fantastic match. Lucky to get away with a, get away with a point like there. Keith, yeah, the Leicester game as well, the nil nil late in the year. Lester did not. I, I don't want you to be reeling off five or six no, matches. I'm just, I'm just saying this is this is what Nick Pope does yes, when yep. he yep. when he needs to save something nine, eight, ten, uh, you know, times out of ten, he does it and he did it again. So you know, just business as usual from him. And again, like I said, I value saves that you can get out for a corner, get out for a defender to clear it, because then all that hard work it actually meant something. It's not just an easy rebound tapping. So all three of them are that. Can yeah. I ask you a question, Lee Lawler? Right? Go on, Jay. So you come to America, 
You come to our big house here. You've seen what it is. What do you think of Atlanta football? Well, I did want to come to that later, but I'll answer it now. Cause, no, well, the sure. game ended. The game ended. Um, well, well, I want to talk about the players in a second, but I will talk about Atlanta. Um, I think this is the best stadium in the world. That's I know I know you showed me around, but even if I was just walking around on my own, I might not have seen everything that you showed me today, but I would have been like, because I've been to Spurs, I've been to Wembley. Um, you know, I, I might say the new structured Real Madrid, Bernabeu, and the new camp deal in a couple of years and so on, but the future is now. I said that to you earlier. That, yeah, the future is now. That is... It looks like a spaceship, and we've all we've been talking all week. Haven't we? This is the one we want to go. This is I the one. I told you too. I told you too that this is on par at least. With this Spurs. is the one we wanted to go to as well. And I and I sense. Yeah. And I come back to you as well. You're seeing. You talk about Juventus shirts. Do you think that now will change because the impact we've been at the fans the last couple of days, the fan events with Shea Game and Shola and meeting up, and now today. Love it. Still got the band on. Still got the band. I've ripped mine off. <laughs> yeah. I've ripped the band lid off, uh, as the expression goes. Do you think now, I'll throw one back at you, is now Newcastle will have a small legacy in, in, inputted in the city? I think this is the kind of thing that could, that could take us past Miggy's legacy. Like, I think that this is the direction we want to go. I think this is a 100% success. The way we played Chelsea, the way we played on fire, then typically, as I told Lee in Atlanta, if I saw a bunch of black and white jerseys, it's Juve, who's played here before. Well, now, now I'm going to have to look twice. Mm. Because the reality is, they're quite likely to be Newcastle jerseys. And I would measure this, it's early days. It is still early days here but I predict high success from this brand management plan right here. And Newcastle will always be welcome in Atlanta because of Darren Eels and Miguel Amaron. We will never forget them here. Yeah, we've got a great video with Jay coming up about Darren Eels in the next few days. But yeah, so the, Im the impact of Atlanta, I mean, it's... It's what we wanted to come, wasn't it, Stephen? Um, before we talk about a couple of players and tweaks and stuff, here is the manager, Eddie Howe. You know, we, we tried to go with one eleven and tried to get them to go as long as we could into 90 minutes if possible. But the players did really well physically because it's been a hard week for them. They've had no sort of mental escape other than the baseball. It's been a lot of training and a lot of hard work. And I think we came into the game slightly fatigued again today that, you know, that we wouldn't train as hard as we have for a Premier League game. I think that showed at times, but full credit to the players, you know, mentally we dug it out, we um, performed very well and yeah, I was really pleased. Okay, so that was Eddie Howe. Uh, Steve, I'll come to you on this. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about Lewis Miley. Literally got, well, he played the full game, didn't he? And to, to be honest with you, he did look not out of place. You, you might question him saying you know, there wasn't protection in the first half with Tenali, but uh, him and Tenali, Miley looked better that day. It was the same thing with Bruno, or sorry, it was the same thing with Joel. And oh, just to shout out Bruno. He shouted Bruno in the player's entrance yes. down there before. And Bruno <laughs> looked at her. Well done. Uh, yeah, so you'll see that in the vlog as well. But yeah, sorry, carry on. No, I was just going to say, and this is the second straight game, Lewis Miley has looked like a Premier League caliber player with the quotations, of course, that it is just a preseason game. But the sample size we've had, he's taken his chance. He looks calm, doesn't he? Looks calm, composed. He looks like he has a clue of what's going on in the game. I like the vision now, that now he Now, you offered. said to me, yeah. would you loan him out? Yeah, now, we're about that ha in the haven't said that now, would you? I probably still would, yeah, just because we have so many midfielders. We have Joel Linton, we have Guimaraes, we have uh, Jay Gray's Ali, we have Willick, we have Anderson. Gordon could possibly play as an eight, although he did really, I thought he did really well tonight. Yeah, Gordon. You look bright again. Left and uh, a bit centrally too. But, anyways, I, I still would because with a kid that special, I think. Why not give him that game time? Because then he can actually, you know, there is going to be drawbacks to loaning him out. Yeah, he could be here. It's. I think it's. It's. It's the more sensible thing. The emotions of it, of of watching him play like that. Yeah, it looks like he fits. And ultimately, it's up to Eddie Howe and and of course Shola, who who's running the loan loan kind of thing. So, yeah. I, I I genuinely think two years he'll be a he'll be a mainstay. Yeah. But let's give him two years to develop somewhere. I'm sick of the sight of Shola. <laughs> I love your, I love your Shola. I've seen him too many times this week. That's yeah. it, uh, three, four times. I took a picture with him. The man is giant. Yeah, like I barely came up 
it wasn't crazy. It was. I, I wanted to talk about two other things before we wrap up. Obviously, um, we'll head to New York in a couple of days' time. We've got all the videos coming there as well, um, which I would imagine the guys that didn't play today will feature in that game, the likes of Bruno and so on. Um, Jacob Murphy, Matt Ritchie. I don't know if Murphy's yeah. ready with his shoulder energy, but um, two other things, maybe a negative and a positive, because this is what we're doing the last words. Um, Anthony Gordon had a spell, what was it, on the left side, and then about half an hour up top, and then played a little bit on the right. Do you see him as your third option behind the main two, Wilson, Isaac? Uh, and also, as a utility player where he'll play anywhere across the three, Steve's mentioned obviously centre midfield, he could fill in the job. Is he now our utility player for this season? Possibly. I think he passed Eddie's do you have the energy test, right? I think that was actually what we were looking at. I, I don't know that to be true, but I suspect that. So every minute that he played, left, forward, middle, he was involved you know, maybe not perfectly, not every play, like overcommitted in some spots, but you know what? I love to see you overcommitted. Like that means that you made a decision and went forward. Um, I think I think he passed that, if that was a test, and that's me speculating, I think he passed it with flying colors because that shows that he's like, put me in, coach. I am ready to play, right? And that's what we're looking for. And he's got that 10, which has got, he's got some weight on it. It sort of lightens you and it heavies you at the same time. But what I saw tonight was a player committed to being like, you know what, I'm doing this through for a long time. I remember I looked up for a minute when got another beer, came back, and I was like, wow, Gordon is still going like the Energizer Bunny. And I was like, you know what, that's what I'm going to ask for. I'm not really here to comment on how he played in his sections he was in, but I do have a very positive thing that is not negative. It's very positive about the fact that that man ran his socks off tonight. He played for the badge right like he that that's my opinion and you don't you don't always see that people can't always do that and remember he's not really well rested right he has not a rest yet hey which i'm going to come on to the next player did it look like that tonight did he no, look no. yeah exactly that's my point next player uh, who hasn't been rested is tonali i don't think he's really had a great start i know it's pre-season he looked all right in the rangers game the Villa game, he got bypassed by McGinn and scored a couple. Tonight, Miley, I thought, was better. I think he will come good. Look, I'm not going to jump on him and yeah, start, no, no. you know, criticise him, but I think he will come good. Is it just a, what is it? Is it just a, does he need a rest? Is he, is he ready? Is it the language? Is it communication? Is it, is it chemistry? Is it mixture? Or you've just got to look back and Jay and think, wait a minute, he's only played three games. It could be all these and none. I will go with Steve's expertise on the Italian league for sure. But when you bring someone over here from that space, it's about a different game entirely. We always talk about can't come over to Spain. It's too hard. France is different. America, good luck. Right. But Italy has its own burden where it comes over here as well, too. You know what? Yeah, maybe parts of that were part of what was tonight. I don't care. I, I just don't care. Like, this is a friendly in America on another continent. It's going to be okay. We do not rule in or out anyone based on tonight. And so, I don't know. I'm not upset by that at all. Like, he was on the pitch. We did good stuff. It's going to be okay. It's going to take a lot more negative for me to say anything negative about that man. Like, let the man do what he does. It'll be okay. It'll be OK, of course, we'll have to talk about it because I'm, I've got to play devil's advocate. I can't always be Mr. Come nice on, Guy. Come on, uh, we will wrap up because it looks like your wife, Anita, is doing a fantastic job. She looks knackered, bless her. <laughs> uh, she looks like she's struggling a little bit. You got you got a sore back yet? Just, just nodding a little bit, just nodding a little bit. Uh, we will wrap up here, of course. We want to know what you think as well. Harvey Barnes will play, of course, in a couple of days. I forgot to mention him. Uh, me and Steve are obviously heading up to uh, New Jersey slash New York. So I'd imagine some videos around Times Square or whatever, because I love the place. But, yeah, that is it. Uh, we've got plenty of videos with Jay involved as well the next few days. They've already been pre-filmed. Uh, go back and check out the match reaction, which I've already put out, and the, uh, the vlog as well. And um, we've got tons more, tons more videos here. I'm rattling on. But uh, thank you very much to, to you. Steve, thank you very much to you, Jay, and Anita behind the camera as well. From Atlanta, take care, everyone. What you're doing. Bye bye.